What's up everyone, Brad here with the Money Dad channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you a method that I personally use to find stock chart patterns on stock charts. I'm gonna show you two tools that I use to do that. And uh, I use this method when I've gone through my personal watch list and I haven't found any stock chart patterns to trade. Um, this is a great way to scan through all of these stocks in the stock market, over 8,000 stocks. I'm gonna show you two tools to do that. Let's jump right in. The first one is gonna be Finviz. The second is gonna be TradingView. We're gonna jump into Finviz right now. We're gonna start there. So uh, at Finviz, we're gonna go over to their stock screener. We're gonna use this to search for all of these stocks in the entire stock market. Like I said right here, it says total 8,511 stocks. This is way more efficient than personally going, you know, uh, stock by stock, looking at the chart, seeing if there's any um, uh, uh, patterns there to, to trade, right? So this is gonna do it for you. You're gonna scan for it. And then you're also gonna have to do your own um, kind of filtering uh, once, it, once you use this screener. And I'll show you why here in a moment. Let's click off some of these ads and then jump into it. So we're here at the stock screener, right? We're gonna click over to this technical button right here, and then look for this pattern section right here. We're gonna go over here, and this is where you can set it to whatever you want. Uh, personally, I, look, I like to look at head and shoulders patterns, and I like to look at horizontal um, support and resistance because uh, head and shoulders patterns tend to break through a horizontal line and then obviously horizontal support and resistance is a horizontal line. The reason that I prefer to trade horizontal um, breaks is because if, it's, if, the, if the line is trending down, um, your stop loss is, is going to be much further down than where you got in and you can lose a lot more money. Um, that may not make sense uh, with words. It might make more sense with pictures. I'll show you here on a chart in a little bit why I prefer to trade a horizontal line. Okay, so um, you can set this to whatever you know, whatever uh, pattern you're looking for. Uh, personally, I like to look at, like I said, horizontal and head and shoulders. So let's go ahead and look at, set it to head and shoulders inverse. So the inverse version of head and shoulders is, is just upside down, and that's a bullish um, projection, whereas head the just regular head and shoulders is a bearish projection. So I'm looking for something that's bullish. So I'm going to go inverse. Let's click on that and see what we get. So it has searched the entire stock market, right? Over 8,500 stocks, and it has given us a list of nine tickers right here. So this is obviously way more efficient than you're gonna get, you know, going manually through all these charts, right? So we now have nine to look at. This does not mean that these nine tickers are great uh, inverse head and shoulders setups. Far from it, actually. And that's why our second tool, Trading View, really is gonna come in handy here. So once we have these nine here, or however many you have when you, when you go through this, um, I like to take these tickers and, and throw them into Trading View to verify with my own eyes um, if this is a true uh, head and shoulders uh, pattern setup, because this is just an algorithm that's you know going through all these 8,500 stocks and it's saying this might look like a a pattern, right? Uh, so you really have to verify yourself. So let's take some that look familiar. Um, I like to start with the ones that look familiar to me. So for example, TripAdvisor, I know that. Harley Davidson, I know that. CarMax, I know that. Uh, let's just start here at the bottom with Trip. So we're gonna go over here to Trading View, and we're just gonna type in Trip. And you get TripAdvisor to come up, and here is the chart for TripAdvisor. Now I can see what they're talking about here with the inverse head and shoulders. You got your left shoulder right here, your head right here, and that what looks like a small right shoulder shaving up right here, and the projection would be something like this. Maybe not as extreme, uh, but that is the idea of what an inverse head and shoulders is gonna do. It's gonna take this bearish looking chart and flip it to the upside. That's the idea for an inverse head and shoulders, right? You got your, your neckline, it looks like it's right about here. We're gonna break through that neckline and head up um, once we break through that neckline is 
is kind of your confirmation that that would be that would be where I buy in personally. So we haven't formed it entirely yet. We're waiting for this right shoulder to kind of come on up a little bit more to this trend line right here. Um, we can even make it a little bit more accurate, right? Something like something like that. And again, th these aren't perfect, um, right? It's an algorithm finding these, but it's something like that. There's your neckline, there's your left shoulder, your head, and you got a small right shoulder forming here. Once it breaks through that blue line, then you would head to the upside. So this one actually looks pretty good. It's the first one I clicked on, and I told you not all of these are going to be great. First one I clicked on looks actually really good. This looks like a promising potential um, inverse head and shoulders uh, pattern to play. I would definitely wait for it to break above that blue line, and then I would be looking much harder into it and potentially uh, putting my, my money there. Um, not financial advice, of course, but this is just my thinking how I would be doing things. Um, so that's one example. Let me uh, look at some others because I need to show you some that just aren't going to work, right? So the other two were CarMax and Harley Davidson. Let's pull those up. Hog is Harley Davidson. Let's type that one in. And uh, yeah, I don't see an obvious head and shoulders pattern here. Um, this looks like I would never see that with my own eyes anyway. If I was going through the charts, I wouldn't see a head and shoulders there. So I would just keep moving along. That one doesn't look any good to me. CarMax is C Max. So let's type that in C Max, right? Pump that one in there. And I don't really see much of a head and shoulders here either. Uh, it would be a really bad one if if this is what they're getting at, this is a left shoulder, this is the head, and then a right shoulder is forming right here. That's just really not well done. I mean, uh, you know, it looks really bad. So I wouldn't play that one either. By far, the best of the three is TripAdvisor, stock ticker TRIP TRIP. That looks really good right there. It might not be a huge gainer because it's kind of a small pattern. Um, oop, what am I doing over here? Let's remove that. Um, but you know your head goes down to twenty dollars, the neckline is at twenty nine. That's actually a nine dollar gain on. It's right now it's a twenty five dollar stock, so that is thirty three percent. That is actually really good. Um, so I take that back. It is a good move to the upside if that plays out. If we can break above that line, so that's um, a really good example actually of using the stock screener at Finviz to find. Um, chart patterns to, to look into. I'm not saying this is perfect, right? Um, you have to go through and look at these charts with your own eyes to find what is truly a, a, you know, a good pattern to trade. And then you also have to wait for that pattern to fully play out, right? I'm not saying um, to go you know, trade this, head, this inverse head and shoulders pattern on TripAdvisor right now because it hasn't fully formed yet. So that means that it, it might not form. It might break down from here and then we no longer have a he inverse head and shoulders pattern to play. We need to wait for it to break above that blue line. So it's a, it's a great, um, the, the Finviz stock screener is a great tool to use, but you have to know how to use it, right? This is a great start. It gets some some stock tickers on your watch list, on your on your map uh, to pay attention to, but you have to um, you have to keep you know you have to go further than that is what I'm getting at. Um, so that was really one really good example. Of course, there are many other patterns that you can um, look into. The double tops, double bottoms, uh, multiple top, usually referred to as triple top, triple bottom. Those can be really good as well because they um, tend to be uh, a horizontal line. I told you I was going to explain the horizontal line thing, so let me go back and do that. Um, so, like I said, double tops, double bottoms, triple top, triple bottom, um, and inverse head and shoulders and regular head and shoulders. Those all um, have horizontal lines. This one is a bad example because it's not a perfect horizontal line. You can see it's descending. Um, so let me use this as an example for uh, why it's not as good to trade on a descending line. Um, basically, wherever you set your stop loss, if you're using this neckline as your, as your stop loss, as your resistance and support, it's descending, right? So let's say this stock cuts through this blue line and that's where you buy in, right? So let's say you buy in right here 
and it's $27.90. Okay, so where do you set your stop loss? Well, you want to set your stop loss. Um, it's actually kind of hard to set a stop loss on a, on, a, on a descending supporting line, right? Because it's it's descending. It's not a specific number. It's not $27.90. Um, as we go further into the future, day by day, this line is coming down. So you have to pay attention to it. Um, and if we break through that support, if we head down, let's say over here in June, you know, a month from now or something like that, you've now lost money. You're not breaking even um, by breaking through that neckline. You're not stopping out at 2790. You're stopping out all the way over here, and it's a little bit lower. It's at 2740 now. So you've just lost 50 cents per share. You know, if you're trading, you know, a thousand shares or whatever, that's that's a lot of money, right? It's not 50 cents. I can't do quick math right now, but you guys get the point, right? It's like 50 bucks or something. Um, so you're losing, you're losing uh, a lot more money, or maybe it's 500 dollars. I don't know. Someone let me know in the comments if I, <laughs> which one of those it is. It doesn't really matter. The point is, you're losing money <clears throat> on a descending um, um, trend line, right? Whereas if this uh, head and shoulders pattern was perfectly horizontal, um, then if you break through, if, if it breaks down, um, you stop out at the same price that you stop, that you got in at. So you don't really lose much money at all, if anything, right? You, you might lose a little bit uh, on trading fees or if your broker takes, uh, you know, whatever, uh, just doesn't give you as good of a price as you were hoping or whatever. Uh, you might lose a little bit of money, but not a lot. Really, the big thing that you're losing out on is time. Your money is invested in something that just didn't make any money. You got stopped out. Um, so your money is just tied up in, a, in something that didn't work out. That's the, that's the biggest loss there is the time. Um, but, you know, if you have that descending um, support line, you're losing out on time and money at that point. So that's the, that's the uh, long-winded version of why I like to uh, trade horizontal support lines, right? So when I'm looking at uh, these patterns, and I've done a lot of videos in the past on uh, bull flags and bull pennants, um, and those are good because they're very common. So it's good to kind of get your feet wet on those. Um, you can find them all over the place, especially in a bull market. When you're in a bear market, you find bear um, flags and bear pennants very often. Um, so th those are good to you know kind of kind of get familiar with chart patterns uh, and technical analysis and, and things like that. But they can be dangerous because they're the uh, support lines and resistance lines are not horizontal, right? They're, they're sloped. So you have to be careful with your, with your stop losses, uh, and you have the potential to lose more, right? So that's what I was getting at there. Um, I, I try to be a little bit more patient finding patterns. I try to look for those horizontal lines. Uh, you're not going to trade as, as often. You're not going to have as many patterns to look at, um, but I think the profit potential is better because you're not losing as much when you lose, right? So that's the big thing is, is really mitigating your losses when you do have a loss. Um, that's what I got for this video, I think, guys. Um, let me know if I missed something, if I need to clarify something, uh, if, you know, you know, if there was something else in this video that you wanted me to expand on, let me know. I can do that in the comments down below. Um, if you want to see a follow-up to this, if you want to learn anything about TradingView or Finviz, let me know. Um, if you liked this video, hit that like button if you haven't yet. And if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. I do um, these kind of tutorials on Finviz and TradingView. I do uh, stock chart pattern uh, trading videos as well. So if you like any of that stuff, go check out my channel. Hit that subscribe button. Thanks, guys. I'll see you in the next one.